kids. Now today we got something really, really cool. I tell you guys that all the time. I always tell you I'm going to be showing you something different, but today's really, really different. It's out there. It's really different. I met a new friend today, a wonderful young woman named Cheyenne, and she's been touring me around with her husband Ivan all through their special room here, and uh, we're going to be talking about all sorts of cool stuff, but today alone we're going to be talking about isopods. What the heck's an isopod? Trust me, I didn't know either, but you know those little tiny gray bugs you often see in your basement, on the basement floor near drains, those little, we often call them pill bugs? Those are isopods. Maybe those aren't the sexy isopods like we're going to show you today, because Cheyenne's got some seriously sexy isopods. Yes, that's a thing, we're going to talk about it later. But you wouldn't even believe it. Pill bugs aren't even bugs. These things aren't bugs. These things are crustaceans like shrimp, lobster, crab, yeah, crustaceans. But these ones live on land. At least the ones we're going to talk about today live on land. There are isopods that live in different uh, aquatic environments. Some of the big deep water marine ones get really, really big. But today we're going to be talking about land isopods. And like their fellow crustaceans, isopods have gills, not functioning lungs. And because of that, they need to live in areas with fairly high levels of humidity. Could these little creatures possibly get any more fascinating? You just wait. You wait till the videos we got coming up. She showed me stuff that just blew my mind. Isopods are actually a massive assemblage of species with well over 10,000 species worldwide. The name isopod itself is actually derived from Greek and it translates to equal foot. And these little guys have seven pairs of feet each. Sounds like a Dr. Seuss book. I know it, but wait till you see them. They're super cool. Isopods are true detrivores, which means they are basically consumers of dead, decaying organic matter, and they're an extremely integral part of most ecosystems. The species we'll be discussing today are all terrestrial, and generally found in forest floors, in amongst leaf litter, under fallen trees, and rocks. So come on, we're going to go and tour this vast collection of tropical isopods. So this is Porcelia magnificus. It's a species that's found in Spain one of the larger species in the hobby that's at least more readily available for hobbyists to buy. They're not too expensive. Usually in Canada, of course, cultures will go for about $100 for 15. They are slower reproducing. So they're nothing like uh, Porcilio scaber, Armadillidium granulatum, or even um, Porcilio lavis. It does take them a while. Generally, they'll have maybe two or three broods a year. The females carry the babies in a brood pouch. I can't remember. This is a male, of course. Um, but Of course. Yeah, so the males, <laughs> sorry, the males have um, larger uropods, at least in the Porcilio genus. So you can see how this guy has almost like two chopsticks yep. sticking out of his... That's uh, the uropods? Those are the uropods, yep. So females will have shorter uropods. Let's see if we can... So there you go. Put this guy back. So that's a female right there. Okay, female and a male. Oh, very obvious differences. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what I've noticed with Porcilio, when they get excited, the males, you can see it a lot, they'll lift up the uh, Europods and they'll kind of walk around with their butt in the air, as that guy's doing. They're super curious. He's peacocking right now. He is. He's like, you guys are upsetting my girls. So fairly simple. We keep all of our Spanish Porcilio like this. Just take the wood. So we use hardwood. This is just oak. Yep. And we just throw it in the oven at 375 degrees for about 10 minutes. And lots of leaf litter. We use a basic ABG mix. So charcoal, sphagnum moss, cocoa fiber, black earth soil mix, which is a mix of hummus and topsoil. And then what we feed these guys is basically fish food. And then they also get some calcium powder. And then cuddle bone is always good. So they need that extra calcium for molting. Okay. So you're going to want to make sure you put cuddle bone with these guys, or at least any sort of calcium source. Is that for all basilios? Yes, okay. all isopods in general. You want a good calcium source on them. So this one's which? Porcilio expansus. Oh, smokes. Mm -hmm. So these guys, if you set up a culture of Porcilio expansus, you want to have a lot of hardwood. They really like the rotting hardwood. Those are impressive. Mm -hmm. They're not the largest isopod, but they're quite pretty to look at. 
if you also end up buying, uh, if anyone who's watching this buys a culture of um, expanses, they do better in larger cultures to start off. And I think you're doing all right. <laughs> oh, these guys are one of my favorites. Very variable too. So, this is Parsilio Levis. <laughs> They're a little productive. Yep, yep. Yeah. So these are what they call Priscilla Levis white. It's a mutation that's bred just white. Nothing else in it. Now, would this be one of the ones, like if you were to set up, <laughs> so if you were to set up a, a large terrarium or vivarium and stuff like that, and you wanted to do that bioactive substrate, yep. you probably wouldn't want to take one of the real high-end sexy ones, unless that was the only one that's in there and you yep. have lots of them because it would be awful cost prohibitive. But would this be one that would be a good candidate for you that? You could use this. Keep in mind if you have a vivarium with smaller amphibians or smaller frogs, Persilio is a very protein hungry genus. And there's actually been accounts of them ganging up and taking down smaller vertebrates and oh. invertebrates. So if you're setting up fall pythons or corn snakes or even bearded dragons, any larger animal, good choice. If you're setting up a smaller setup, not Or if you're just doing just plants or something. Plants would be fine, yep. So these are another really impressive isopod. Let's see if we can find some. So this is the younger culture. There's a more established culture. Those are stunning. Mm -hmm. They're I really had amazing. no idea what I was coming to see on this stuff. I, I look, <laughs> you look online and you really don't know. They look better in person. So these are Porcilio SP Sevilla. So really similar to Hoffman Sagai, although they reproduce faster and they don't get as big. So they've kind of eaten away all of their sphagnum moss. We put sphagnum moss at the back for their moist spot. And it also gives them something to eat and break down as they are detrivores. You want to give them everything they can to help decompose. And then their poop or frass, it's great for your plants too. So this is Porcilio, pardon the name, spin a penis. It's what? Spin a, spin a penis. Spin a penis. <laughs> That's yeah, their... We're, we're going to video you. We're doing what? What's the name of this one? Porcilio spin a penis. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird to say. So this is a newer culture, newer species that we have. We've only had them a couple months. This looks very similar to the one I think I've, I've just in my looking online. Vulgaris? Yes, they, okay. but they're almost like the Porcilio version of them. They do really great. They're oh, easy Vulgaris is a, that other gene. Yeah, okay. Armadillidium. These guys, from what we found, do really good when kept on the moisture side. So keeping them like Porcilio scabber. Nice, big, huge, moist area. Not letting them dry out completely. It's going to be very familiar for all of your viewers. So Armadillidium maculatum. It's also called the zebra isopod. Yeah, that's one of the more common ones that people start mm -hmm. with. This line is actually a line based in France, so the original ones are taken from Spain. This culture, these individuals at least, were taken from France. They get a lot bigger. I don't know if I have any individuals to show, but well, there's lots of babies, of course. Is there any issues with trying to import these? I'm sure there would be, trying to get these legally into the country. The there paperwork is, would be huge. There is a little bit of paperwork to do. We don't do it ourselves. It, that's a little bit over our experience. It's daunting, yeah. Yeah, but there's a lot of importers that you can go through to find them. Oh, smokes. Which one's this one? Uh, Porcilio Levis, and the morph for this is called Milkback. They kind of look like uh, cookies, like Oreo cookies. No, they don't. Oh, maybe not you, really. you need to have better cookies. Oh, I guess that's true. <laughs> but I, I'm pretty sure there, there's not going to be one or one single agree. viewer that's going to say mm, no. Nope. <laughs> These do look more, a lot more similar to the ones that people associate that see in their basement is they often call them pill bugs. Yes, yep. But they're pretty. They reproduce extremely fast. So keeping in mind, Priscilla Levis reproduces at a strong, well, just amazing. We started with the culture of 15 about four months ago. And this is what we're at now. Oh, wow. So they breed fast. And what we're actually feeding these guys, um, so to help with their protein needs, we're actually just feeding a basic Nutrifin staple food. So any sort of basic good quality Fish plate food. food. Yep. So and they also got morning carrots, wood. morning wood, which is a rapashi product, zucchini, cucumber. Yeah, I've heard about people using rapashi morning wood and uh, the other one, bug. Bug burger. Bug yep. burger, yes. They really seem to like it. They eat anything. This is high yellow. These guys also reproduce very fast. 
It's another larger species from Spain. Really popular in the hobby. Really easy to care for as well. So if you want, <laughs> that's their poop too. That's all their poop. So the, you, you have the odd one. Okay. What better. channels, short of your, your, your web page and, and Facebook, do you have methods of moving these animals around to other interested keepers? So a lot of the uh, Facebook groups, there's Facebook specific groups for isopods. Yes. That you could somewhat sell on Facebook to put a big, huge cut off on selling animals. Yes. But there's ways that you can kind of ward it to make it yep. not deleted. And Post a picture and then they send you private messages and stuff. Exactly. People learn, to, learn, to, learn ways around it. Putting them out would be a little difficult. These ones might be hard to pick up. See if we can. This is Armadillidium SP Albania. Not as sexy as some of the other ones, but it does have those unique little spots once you start mm -hmm. getting closer to it. They're also sexually dimorphic as well, with the females being black and the males being brown. Oh, that's neat. So they're quite interesting. You definitely know if you have boys or girls then. <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah. Locality of Porcilio Silvestri. Let's see if we can find them. So this is Porcilio Silvestri Catalina locality. They get larger than the traditional Silvestri. Now, why would why is this one? Is it because the color is similar to the that rat snake? <laughs> yes, yes, it's nice. Well, it's kind of red. It's kind of orange too, so though. You like red. I do love red. Armadillidium warneri. Mm -hmm. Oh, that one's unique. Mm -hmm. Lots of babies. They get bigger than this. About twice the size of this individual here. I like how it has that kind of a red skirt to it. Mm hmm. They're absolutely beautiful. These guys, you don't want to keep too moist, though. So keep them like you would Hoffman Sagai or even Expansis. So you want to have a designated moist spot and then the rest should be semi-dry. So giving them a mist every other day will cover that. But you don't want them soaking wet. You will. This is, this is where your Hazi culture will be coming from. Oh my God, I haven't looked at this culture in weeks. So you didn't know that you had that many? No, we don't tend to bother them too much. Well, that's the nice thing about them. There's, mm -hmm. there, there's so little work involved with them. When we first got isopods, I was always checking on them. Every time we'd clean them, I'd be lifting logs and, oh, they look amazing as their babies, like Mankai is what they call baby ice. So this is Priscilio flavel marginratus. I found they reproduce extremely well. Another really, you know, some people consider them to be intermediate to advanced. I don't find them to be advanced or intermediate at all. I find them actually to be easy. We keep them similar to how we keep the Persilio scab or Lavis, and they've done exceptionally well. They breed great, they eat good, they're all over the place. Not extremely tiny, but... I was I was not expecting this at all. I had no <laughs> idea what I was walking into. <laughs> There's a lot, and you know what? Isopods are amazing. There's, it's not our craziest culture, but let's see if we can find any. This isn't the one I gave the snake shit to either. As you can see, really good reproducers. Um, common in the trade, everyone calls them dairy cow isopods, extremely popular. It's kind of the go-to when people are jumping it's into the It's the ideal isopods. one for people to start with. Yeah. And that's just cal calcium. Yep, that's, well, the calcium we're using right now is Earth Pro A, but any calcium supplement will work as well. We just use this because that's what we use with the chameleons. Yeah, you always have it available. Exactly, so we don't have to buy a whole new one. Uh, oh my god, this culture's... <laughs> so you need this one's 74 cultures of these is what you're saying this is oh god this is parcelio sp barbate they're not too expensive another good vivarium species to keep they actually like it more arid so if you have a more arid vivarium this could be a good option they also reproduce at extreme numbers as you can see and that's not even okay that's not bad and then frass all over my hand frass that's what yes. it's called yep frass or poop so I have it all over my hand now. Wow, you guys That's are That's a crazy. selling feature. Yes. Ivan likes that too. Yep, yeah, he does like that. He likes all the... This one's which? Persilio SP Morocco. Another medium-sized Spanish Persilio. So this one up top here that I'm looking at right now, that would be a boy. That would be a boy, yes. Look at that. And that big one down there, that's a boy. And do we have any girls here? You said bigs can't learn new things. <laughs> we might have some females. There we go. So there's like a girl there. Yep. So all Pacilios are like that. 
Most of them, yep. I believe there's one or two species that are a little bit more difficult to tell by the Europods, but majority of them, they're easy to sex. Oh, it's orange. Mm-hmm. I think I have, there's some there. So this is Persilio Lavis orange. I love their little antenna type things. Mm -hmm. Persilio SP al or SP albino. So another really common isopod in the trade, really easy to find, easy to reproduce. Keep them moist, don't let them dry out completely. Now those little tiny, tiny things that are scooting around in there. Those are babies. Those are babies? Mm -hmm. yeah. Isopods actually make wonderful parents, especially in the genus Persilio. Females will actually protect their brood and raise their brood and You got it's it guys, amazing. these are the cichlids. <laughs> I'm gonna say of the bug world, but these aren't bugs. Silly Hoffensegei white antennae. So this is a locale. They're a lot smaller than Hoffman's, like the usual Hoffmansegei, but they've got the nice white antennae. I'm trying to find one that'll show it. These guys I found are more reclusive. There we go. So nice white antennae and white feet. And these are still like half grown, is that what you think? Yep, these are still young ones. So they'll get a little bit larger than this. At least these guys. Um, so this culture, I don't, they're not doing too well. We made a few mistakes. This is Porcilio warneri. Let's see if we can. There we go. So that's Porcilio warneri. Yeah. There was one that you had out before that had that similar type of scoots on the side, the similar mm -hmm. type of pattern. I don't remember which one it was, but it was pretty sharp. The flavo? Flavo marginatus? So let's see if we can find a nice big one in here. There's a few really big males. Let's see if we can grab you. It's a decent sized male. Oh, my kids are gonna be so excited. <laughs> they're, they're awesome, Not. eh? I haven't yet told my wife I'm bringing bugs home. Ah, uh, just tell the tell the crustaceans. Yeah, not <laughs> bugs. Don't have any bugs in the basement. What are you talking right, about? Right, they're not bugs. They're not bugs. No, Hoffman say guy. They're one of the trade isopods. You know, everyone you gotta have Hoffman say guy if you have isopods. Let's see if we can take this guy on. I kind of went crazy with isopods. Yeah, you're, the only problem you, you already knew what was going to happen is I've already yep. got two <laughs> now. Like, oh, okay, well, which other ones do we need? Hmm. Oh, and there's so many species. So that's Persilio spatulatus. Another really great flat isopod from Spain. Like they're very flat. Definitely not a beginner isopod, more so intermediate to advanced. They are kind of finicky when it comes to their moisture levels. And uh, so Armadillidium granulatum, another really good beginner species. They're, they're not too bad. They look really nice. They got the uh, lime green blotches around them. Another bigger isopod. Well, it's not too big, but they're quite Somewhat nice. prolific for you. Very prolific and keep them semi, well, <laughs> <laughs> keep them nice and moist. Give them lots of food. We actually gave them some ficus leaves and they're already breaking them down. Oh God. Um, yeah, so Armadillidium over Persilio generally prefers more vegetation, more leaf litter, things like that over protein sources. Okay. So keep that in mind when you're setting So you don't have to do as much of the fish food or anything like no, that? No, not at all. They still do like it, but... Um, so this is Armadillo officinalis. These guys are actually interesting. Um, so I'm told These at ones least. Are. They are. So I'm told people in Greece used to pop them like pills because they're a good source of calcium. And I guess they're good for stomach aches. I guess people in Greece are just a little weirder than you yep, if you thought yep. that was even possible. They are. And when they get agitated, they actually rub their um, the segments together mm -hmm. and it makes a very screeching sound. You, it's not loud. But it sounds like you a, can hear it it's audible you can yeah. yeah it's amazing i don't want to bug them too much but they're awesome these guys also live eight to ten years hmm. so they're very long-lived species now they're boring to look at but they're actually quite cool this is porcelia has a giant so you can kind of see yeah that's a big isopod these guys. How did, how did collecting isopods or keeping isopods even start? 
I believe it started with, um, you know, the, how do I say it? The uh, popularity of bioactive. Like, it's always been around. People have always cultured them, especially dark But then we're looking, because if we're doing vivariums in our houses, we need tropical isopods, which exactly. these all are. We can't just use the ones that are from temperate zones. No. Um, so this is armadillidium or ar oh God. armadillidium kluge dubrovnik. So you have lots of little ones, but that's yep. an adult there. That's an adult there, yep. I think we should have some adults. They're they really don't like light, or what is it? Nope, yeah. nope. They're definitely more uh, nocturnal in that aspect. But they're they produce quite well. They don't take a lot of work. So this is Silvestri. The one that was form. similar that you said was one of your favorites because they had that coloration. Yep, the Catalina, they get larger than the normal type But all those little tiny, tiny white dots that are moving all over that wood, are those babies? Mm. These ones here? No, just these little fine little things. Oh, everywhere most here. likely mites or some sort of springtail. That they don't affect them at all. Not at all. So, Parsidio Scabber Dalmatian. They look more white in all honesty. Are you going to tell me these look like cookies too? Because they Yeah, don't. they kind of look like cookies and cream ice cream. So you don't actually stir up and, and stir up the substrate at all on that? Because I know so when we looked at one of them that you, you didn't see them on the surface, so you didn't go into it. Is there a reason yeah. for that? So one of the reasons why is you don't want to potentially harm one of the isopods in there. You also don't want to crush any babies that could be potentially establishing themselves into the uh, culture. And what's the babies called? Menkai. Menkai. Or Menkai. More things Biggs is going to have to look up. <laughs> this 22-year-old woman's already shown me up oh, many, God. many times already. <laughs> Biggs knows nothing, nothing about this. Okay. Uh, so another tip that I found with keeping them is when you're watering them, water along the sides of the bin so it saturates along the um, edge. Instead and of misting the entire container. That, well, we do mist, but just for the wet spot. So okay. actually, I can demonstrate. So, just a generalized water. And so, you're using a certain type of water, right? Yep, so we use spring water. We just get ours from Costco, because we're cheap. <laughs> yeah. But what I'll do is you just go around the side, give it a good moist, and then we'll take all of the cardboard out, and then just do a final mist over everything. So the concentrated uh, jet of water is basically to provide that more moist area yep. and then the moisture for the whole thing so that the, the animals have a gradient. Exactly. And you're not bugging them. So some people, they'll remove the pieces of bark and then they'll mist and they'll do that. But then you're upsetting the animals underneath the bark. By doing that, you still get your moist area situated without bothering anything around. The least amount of bugging you can do with them, the better. All right, so apparently after we've looked at uh, these crustaceans for an hour or so, and uh, I, Biggs is completely blown away, Cheyenne's going to send me home with a couple of species uh, of uh, these land shrimp. Uh, what species am I going to be going home with? Persilio hoffmansegai and Persilio hazi. And these are super sexy ones, right? Extremely sexy isopods. Extremely sexy isopods. That's all we need to know. All right, so now, no, that's not all we need to know. Cheyenne's actually going to give us the rundown on how to keep these two Pacilio species so uh, Biggs doesn't kill them. For sure. So you want to make sure you start off with a good nutrient-based substrate. So any ABG uh, recipe works good. So you're going to want to use the uh, black soil mixture. So it's a ABG? Big, ABG, Atlantic Botanical Gardens. It's a mix that most dart frog people use. Okay. So basically, it's your um, black soil, so black earth soil, you can get it at any supermarket. As long as it doesn't have any fertilizers exactly, and stuff. Exactly, yep. yep. So the good thing with black earth soil, it's usually hummus, a uh, little bit of peat, a little bit of topsoil. There's no fertilizers or anything added to it. Nice and organic. Yeah, exactly. I bought a bag of organic. Organic works just as good. You want to make sure you have uh, some sphagnum moss for them to break down. Sphagnum moss also holds humidity, so especially in your moist area, you're going to want to set up a good chunk of sphagnum moss just to help hold that humidity in that area. It's hard to see here, but we've got a nice big clump situated in the corner here that they can kind of go to. 
So they don't have enough humidity, even for dry Persilio species like these guys, they will, they will desiccate, they will die and they will dry. You also want to have leaf litter. So we use any hardwood leaf litter. So this is a nice degraded, chewed up piece of uh, oak leaf litter. You could also use maple, you could use birch. Is it specifically why it has to be hardwoods? Most people tend to avoid um, the softwood, being as the fennels or the oils can be really you know, detrimental to some of the other But you could use something like willow leaves you or something. You could use okay. willow leaves. Those would be yep. poplars yep. and stuff like that, you which could, are kind yep. of junk woods, but you could yep. use those? Okay. You could use magnolia as well. Okay. You also want to have um, plenty of... Did I cover the... I covered the wood, right? The yeah, hardwood? you can go again. Okay, yeah. right, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so you want to have lots of hardwood or even cork. You can sanitize it. Um, I do recommend it, especially as you don't know what you're going to be introducing into the culture. You don't want to introduce any native isopods or native centipedes or native millipedes, anything that could pose a risk to your culture or even the mankind in the culture potentially. So it's good to. She loves using that word mankind. She just throws yeah, that around. Yeah. <laughs> it's baby isopods. Yeah. It's cute. Yeah. Um, but as for uh, moisturizing, this culture has been moisturized, so we can demonstrate that. So we've got. You know, generic mister from Dollarama. And we've got spring water. So once again, spraying along the side, letting the water kind of drip down to the sides. And then you want to do the back half. So where Priscillo and uh, Priscillo Hoffensega and Priscillo Hazi, they don't tend to like it too, too dry. So you do want to have a decent uh, moist spot, at least 25% of the enclosure moist. So give them a good moist area. And then you want to situate your sphagnum there. And you want to situate a few pieces of bark there. And then we'll remove the fish food because you don't want to get that wet. And we'll give the culture a good spray. And that's usually good every five days. And you mentioned that you don't generally disturb the whole soil mix or anything when you're doing your misting. You just mist on top. Exactly, yeah. yep. Because you don't want to potentially crush any animals or disturb the whole ecosystem that's set up there. Yeah. The less you bother them, the better in the long run. The more you bother them, the more ice you're going to lose down the roads. And you mentioned you feed uh, a mixture of different types of foods, but uh, you use fish food. Good quality fish food is one. Yep. Uh, you've used uh, two different products from Rapashi. Yep, so uh, you use uh, Rapashi morning wood and bug burger. Bug burger, sorry. You can use it dry or you can use it in the gel form. They'll eat it both. Okay. You also can use any sort of, you know, safe vegetable or fruit that you would use for your reptiles or amphibians. Zucchini, you know, apple. she didn't say your family. She just said your reptiles and your amphibians. So if you got carrots in your fridge for your reptiles and your amphibians, but not for your family, you can <laughs> use those. You might as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, these guys I found really like the Chinese cabbage. So we give our ice pod cultures a lot of the Chinese cabbage. Sui choy, the yes. big one? Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, they get a lot of carrots. They love cucumber. Sweet potato, they go crazy for as well. Oh, okay. We tend to feed it raw. Um, usually, when it's fed um, cooked, they get stuck in it. So, maybe not feed it. They probably cooked. spoil a lot quicker, it does, too. Yep. So, you yep. just cut them in little coin little shapes. Yep. 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 Um, you can also feed, you want to tend to not feed too many fruit, as you can get gnats or uh, fruit flies yep. that attract your culture, and they just become a nuisance. They're not yep. going to harm the animals. They're just annoying. Yeah, you'll have them flying around your room all yep. the time, just be more of a pain. But you can feed some fruit, and they will feed on that. But these guys are actually nature's, one of nature's decomposers. They break yeah. down all that stuff. So if you were to use them in a vivarium type setting with animals, the waste products that the animals produce, the shed snake skins, yeah. those type of things would all be products that they could break down and consume yeah. as well. They will feed on that and they will reuse that. And if you have plants in there, the frass or the poop that they produce is great fertilizers too. Cool. But keep it in mind, if you have a vivarium, anything in the porcilio genus, Make sure you don't keep it with things like dart frogs, inverts like um, centipedes or uh, tarantulas, or even small lizards or small I'm just going to eat them. <laughs> They've been known, yes. There's actually one account on one of the local ice pod groups. A gentleman had a big Sclopendia gigantea, I believe, a big uh, centipede. And unfortunately, it molted. So it was, when they molt, their exoskeleton's really soft. He had Lavis in there, Lavis dairy cows to be exact. And I guess they took advantage of that soft centipede and they ate right through the head. <laughs> so, keeping in mind... Stories what a like, shame. Stories like that aren't prevalent. <laughs> we'll, leave, uh, we'll leave those guys that want to put uh, put all the, the animals together. We'll leave that for them, the guys that like to drop all that money yep. on those rubber duckies. 
Yes, yeah, they, yes. That's the perfect one for that. Oh if you want to spend hundreds of dollars on a rubber ducky, isopod, something that you're going to put into your terrarium and you're never, ever, ever going to see it again, you should do that. That's a great idea. Yep. No, if you're going to get anything into Cobaris, Cobaris Marina first. And then maybe try Red Skirt. And then if you really want to be uh, brave, do your duckies. Yeah. yeah. Cut your teeth on those ones first. <laughs> yeah, spend $400 or so and get a culture of those, but make sure you're ready for that because you don't want to take a plunge into that and lose all your money. Yeah. Because lots of people do that and they lose their whole culture. Yeah. And all their money's gone for that. So don't, uh, don't do that just to be cool. <laughs> to be cool. That's what you do to be cool. You buy duckies. Now, <laughs> if you want to be cool, you buy duckies. <laughs> But um, that's about it. They're fairly easy to set up and just leave the cultures alone. Weekly maintenance is fine. This is room temperature. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's about comfortable. 75 degrees in here. Yeah. Even if it, even around 78 or 79 degrees, it won't hurt them at all. No. Nope. It's not too bad, especially in Porcelio genus. Cuberis and some Armadillidium, they do like it colder. So if you are getting rubber duckies again, going back to there, making sure your house isn't in that 80 degree range. You want yep. 73 to 75, ideally. Okay. You don't want them too hot. Now I noticed I, I when I read about them is that they like it in the dark, but all your containers are clear, and your rooms lit up. And I'm assuming because you keep reptiles and snakes, your rooms are yep. on a timer. It is. So okay. it'll turn off at about 10 p.m. Okay. And then they get complete darkness in here. Okay. So. And they're usually hidden underneath all the structure that's in the containers anyway. So the clear, the, the light aspect's not a problem. Not at all. Okay. Nope. Uh, bin size. So we use these bins. They are uh, this, well, the medium size bins from Home Depot. Of course, bigger bins are better for larger cultures, but when you're just getting a new culture, sometimes it's nice to set them up in something smaller. You can monitor the culture and you can see how they're doing. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, got a good height to the, to the depth yeah. of the media ratio, and it's got a nice big floor space for them. Yeah. Um, the the height would be useless. There's no, no benefit to it putting height in it. Not for these guys, no. They're not really going to utilize that much. Another thing with Persilio is you want to have good ventilation with Persilio. So we've got venting cut on all three sides, and we also have holes cut on the top as well. Okay. Ventilation is going to be really important for any of the uh, Persilio genus. They don't like stagnant air, and it will unfortunately cause culture crashes or death if mm -hmm. you have stagnant air or just too much humidity and accumulation. Armadillidium, on the flip side, depending on the species, like Armadillidium warneri we talked to, they don't like humidity at all. But things like Armadillidium maculatum or even Kluge, they do good with higher humidity. Okay. So you don't have to do as much ventilation on them. Not like the Persilio. And I, I look at you notice every one of her bins is clearly marked with which species. The mm -hmm. bins are all very, very, they're, they're not necessarily airtight, but they, they seal very well. They click shut so she's never going to have any mixing. Nope. What's the, you have different barcode colors. Is there a... Yep, so with the barcode colors, things like the yellow orange, those are semi arid so you don't okay. want to get too much humidity on them. Or things like the red skirt, which is the red pink, those are higher humidity species. So it's kind of nice to have some color coding going on, especially when we're rushing through getting the cultures done. If it's a busy night, you know, we know this one needs more moisture given than spatulatus, for example. So it kind of helps, but as you do it more, you kind of kind of get to know what species it is and what care they need and how much humidity for culture. It kind of becomes a habit after a while. You kind of get used to it. Did you guys think you, you, you wanted to know more about these bugs today? Did you think you woke up today and said, hey, I want isopods, but I bet you do now. They're the best. Isopods are amazing, and everyone needs isopods in their life. <laughs> you got that, guys, right from the source. <laughs>